Hi and welcome. This week I'm taking a look at the 2015 Indian Scout. Now Indian Motorcycles was formed in 1901 and ran all the way to 1953 before they went broke. The first Scout was introduced in 1920. The Indian brand went through a succession of owners after that with little success. It wasn't until 2011 when Polaris bought the Indian brand that Indian Motorcycles was truly reborn. First with the Chief, which was an attempt to uh, capitalise on the original Chief, and certainly style-wise, it sticks pretty closely to the styling of the original Chief. But with the Scout, which was introduced in 2015, Indian took a slightly different tact. They wanted to create a motorcycle, in, in my opinion, which looked like it had evolved from the original Scout and was what the original Scout would have been if it was still in production today, with a succession of um, engineering improvements over that time. So the new Scout, while it has styling cues from the original, doesn't hide the fact that it's a modern motorcycle. That water-cooled 60-degree V-twin engine with its twin overhead cams and four valve heads is right out there on display and doesn't hide the fact that it's a modern engine. I will say that I thoroughly enjoyed this engine. If you're getting off a Japanese or Italian bike, you'll be right at home here because um, it's very easy to acclimatise to this engine. If you're more used to riding Harley-Davidson's, you will find that you have to rev this motor a little bit more. The motorcycle has uh, two alloy subframes. There's a front subframe and a rear subframe that use the engine as a stressed member, so there's no actual frame as such. Uh, Suspension-wise, we've got 41 millimetre forks on the front, which are non-adjustable, and twin shocks on the back which are preload adjustable. Overall I found the suspension to be fairly underdamped and perhaps a little undersprung. It was a bit hard to tell. Anything over say 120 kilometers per hour over bumpy roads and it was quite an unpleasant experience. Under those speeds cruising around the suspension really isn't a real problem for you. This was quite an interesting experience for me because this is the first feet forward motorcycle that I've ridden. Um, and I was a little bit uh, intimidated by that uh, before I got on this motorcycle, but I found I, I really acclimatised to the riding position fairly quickly. It only took me a couple of blocks before the low seat height, uh, the pullback bars and the forward foot pegs seemed quite natural. And it's certainly different to a sports bike, which uh, is quite short in front of you, whereas this motorcycle seems to stretch out in front of you and uh, you're holding the bars and you're sort of piloting the, this long, lean, low missile off into the distance. It's uh, quite exhilarating, actually. Uh, uh, braking wise, we've got 285 discs at both ends. Uh, there's one at the front, one at the rear. The front is operated by a twin piston sliding caliper and the rear has a single piston caliper on it. Now the braking, while adequate for general cruising, is a little bit lacking once you get into sports sort of riding. Um, the one advantage of its long wheelbase is that the rear brake on this bike actually does do something, whereas of course on a lot of modern sports bikes the rear brake really is there just for stabilising you a little bit through corners. It doesn't really do much in the way of braking. But on this the rear brake actually does work. So combined with the front, it's certainly fine for general day-to-day -day use and cruising, but once you start punting this bike really hard, the lack of braking does show. Uh, a bigger disc on the front with a four piston caliper would have made a world of difference, or a, a twin disc setup certainly would have been even better. But, um, you know, it, I guess it is what it is, and uh, it's just one of those things that um, perhaps it was done as a cost-cutting exercise. Cosmetically, I do like the styling. It is, certainly has those styling cues from early Indians in the original Scout. It's low and lean. It's not um, overly dressy, perhaps like the Chief is. Uh, it's more purposeful in, in its look. Um, the wheels are 16 inch at both ends. Uh, it runs a 130, 90, 16 at the front and a 150, 80, 16 at the rear. Uh, weight wise, it weighs 244 kilos and the seat height is 25 inches or 635 millimeters. So it's really a, a really low seat height. And even with that uh, relatively high weight, 
um, though probably not by cr cruiser standards. You don't really notice it because everything is really low down. You've got low seat height, the engine sits fairly low, everything is quite low in the frame, so it carries its weight well. Now ground clearance wise, uh, I had no issues. Obviously I'm still new to cruisers, so I wasn't really punting it super hard, but I was giving it a, a good go in the corners. And I found uh, no problems with, with uh, anything touching down. Uh, there's certainly more than adequate ground clearance. Now handling wise, uh, this is one thing that surprised me because often with fat tyres and a long wheelbase, you expect something that is fairly slow in the steering and, and a bit cumbersome. The only time you find the handling a bit cumbersome is really around roundabouts and slow speed corners. Once you get up a bit of speed, this motorcycle is actually really quite nimble. Uh, and it certainly surprised me. And that combined with the, the easy uh, power delivery of the engine made it a, a really um, exciting ride and a pleasurable experience through the hills. Sure, you're not going quite as fast as you would if if you were on a, uh, a sports bike or one of those performance nakers, but um, you'll get to the far end of your journey probably with a, a less sore ass than you would uh, on most other motorcycles. Comfort wise, I was surprised how comfortable the feet forward, pull back bars, low seat height, seating position was. I was really enjoying the experience and at the end of my one hour ride, I felt quite relaxed. You can end up feeling a bit windsock-like if you actually hit higher speeds, but um, if you're cruising and just um, taking the corners and enjoying the scenery, uh, it's certainly a relaxing, pleasant experience. Now the finish of the motorcycle is good, paintwork is very nice, um, chrome work is really quite nice too. Um, instrument wise we've got a single speedo, but the um, LCD insert gives you a taco, trip meter, odometer, and I think there was a uh, ambient temperature in there as well. Oh, and it's also got idiot lights for low fuel and other things in there too. The switch gear is really nice quality, so there's no complaints there. Overall, I'd just like to say that if you're thinking of venturing from a Japanese sports bike or Italian sports bike or, or um, naked, you may want to look at something like the Indian Scout. It is probably uh, a little bit more user friendly um, because it sort of sits not quite in the real old school cruiser uh, segment. It's, it's been updated, it's been brought a little bit more into the uh, 21st century and uh, you would find it really easy to acclimatise apart from those issues that I mentioned with the uh, suspension being a little bit under damped and perhaps under sprung and the brakes being a little bit light on, but uh, certainly the suspension, there are aftermarket uh, suspension kits you can get, there are springs and damper kits for the front, and you can also get uh, replacement uh, shock absorbers for the rear, so there are no real big issues, it just requires a little bit more money spent on it. Certainly I would uh, recommend you having a look at the Scout if you're thinking of moving across to the cruiser market. It is definitely a candidate for the older rider like myself, when I feel I can't cope with uh, the hard seat and the uh, firm suspension of my current bike, maybe I'll, I'll look at something like this. So in conclusion, it's a fine motorcycle. Uh, you know, I haven't really uh, kept an eye on the cruiser market, uh, particularly the American cruisers, over the last uh, probably 10, 15 years. They haven't been something that, have, that has interested me. But uh, like all things, once you take a ride on a motorcycle that you may not have con even considered in the past, it can often surprise you. And uh, certainly this Scout surprised me. Um, I'd also like to thank A1 Motorcycles in uh, Ringwood, Victoria for loaning me the 2015 Indian Scout. And you can find their contact details in the description below. I'll see you next time.